Lisa, will you have Mark to be your husband and will you pledge yourself to him in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with him according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? If so, say, I will. Mark, will you have Lisa to be your wife and will you pledge yourself to her in all love and honor, in all duty and service, in all faith and tenderness, to live with her according to the ordinance of God in the holy bond of marriage? If so, say, I will. I will. Mark, as you come before these witnesses, are you signifying that you are taking the initiative in this marriage covenant and that you will, by the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, assume the greater responsibility in carrying out its terms if so say i do i do as friends family and witnesses here present will you commit to supporting praying for and encouraging this couple in their marriage if so say we will we will, we will. alex having heard the intentions of their hearts do you give your full blessing to this marriage i do who gives this woman to this man? Okay, take one step forward. Oh. All right. Now, take a deep breath. On behalf of the Ewer and the Pettershaw families, I want to welcome you here today as we witness together the joining of Mark and Lisa in holy matrimony. Let's begin with a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this couple, for the story that you have written in their lives, for the redemption and the salvation that you have given to us through the Lord Jesus Christ, and for the example that you have given to us, Lord, in the relationship between a husband and wife specifically in the relationship between Christ and the church. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon this time today. We ask, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would fall upon this place in power. We ask that you would fill us, Lord, and that we might glorify you in all that we say and do here present. In Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. At this point, Mark and Lisa have decided to perform the Chord of Three ceremony. The Chord of Three is exemplified in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. And as they do that, I will explain and read to you from that section. Go ahead. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. And a cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. The cord of three strands that is represented by this uh, braid that they are putting together are the cords of Mark, Lisa, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the three cords upon which they are basing their marriage. And so they are symbolizing this by braiding these cords together, showing that they are now one with Christ in their marriage. You can be seated. <laughs> Mark and Lisa have decided to enter into a covenant marriage. A covenant is not a word that you hear much anymore, so some of you may not know what it means. A covenant is a solemn agreement between two parties that is unbreakable except by death. A covenant is more than a contract. It is so much more than a mere agreement. It is not to be entered into unadvisedly or frivolously, but with reverence, prayer, counsel, and much thought and consideration.
covenant marriage therefore stands in stark contrast to the disposable relationships we see portrayed in the world that some might call marriage. A covenant marriage does not fall apart at the first sign of difficulty. It does not waver in its commitment to each other, but perseveres through the trials and difficulties the world will inevitably throw at it. A covenant marriage has one of its core values, the welfare and needs of the other person. It always seeks the good of the other person, even if it comes at great personal cost. You might be thinking, wait, I thought marriage was supposed to make you happy. I thought it was supposed to be about love and attraction. You'd be right. Covenant marriage has all that, but it starts from a very different place. In Genesis chapter one, the very first book of the Bible, we get the story of creation. In chapter two, we zoom in on the details of the creation of man and the first marriage between Adam and Eve. The last verse of chapter two spells it out. It says that they were naked and unashamed before one another. This nakedness was not just a lack of clothes, it was a transparency of emotions, needs, and thoughts that brought about an unparalleled intimacy that is the goal of covenant marriage. Now let's be real, this was before sin entered the picture. So they didn't have that to contend with, and that's a big problem in our world today. But God provided a way for Mark and Lisa to live a sinless life before each other and before God. Through Jesus Christ, his son, God has removed Mark and Lisa's sin so they may experience the same level of transparency before each other as Adam and Eve. Does that sound impossible? We serve a God who accomplishes the impossible every day. As Mark and Lisa submit themselves to Jesus as their king, their shepherd and their Lord. God places his own Holy Spirit within them to enable them to accomplish the impossible task of always seeking the good of each other. The vows that Mark and Lisa will take when entering into this covenant may sound familiar and thus we may be quick to dismiss their significance. But I encourage you not to just listen to them, but to make a commitment to renew them in your heart as you hear them. As they take their vows, please join hands with your spouse and rededicate yourself anew to your own vows. Mark, look deeply into Lisa's eyes and repeat these words after me. I, Mark, I, Mark, make a covenant with God. Make a covenant with God. And with you, Lisa. And with you, Lisa. To take you as my wedded wife. To take you as my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer or for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. When we are blessed. When we are blessed. And when we are tried. And when we are tried. I commit our marriage to Christ. I commit our marriage to Christ. Always placing him as the head of our lives. Always placing him as the head of our lives. I commit my life to loving you. I commit my life to loving you as Christ loves the church as Christ loves the church laying down my life for you laying down my life for you as Christ did for us his church as Christ did for us his church I will place your concerns above my own I will place your concerns above my own and forsaking all others and forsaking all others I will keep you in the center of my heart I will keep you in the center of my heart I will cherish you Lisa I will cherish you Lisa and I will share with you of our God until he comes. Lisa, deeply into Mark's eyes and repeat these words after me. I, Lisa, make a covenant with God and with you, Mark, to take you as my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, Love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. When we are blessed. When we are blessed. And when we are tried. And when we are tried. To be caring and understanding. To be caring and understanding. To respect, honor, and adore you. To respect, honor, and adore you. Throughout our life. Throughout our life. 
I commit our marriage to Christ. I commit our marriage to Christ. Always placing him, Always placing him as the head of our lives. As the head of our lives. I commit my life to loving you. I commit my life to loving you. As Christ, as the church loves Christ. As Christ. As the church loves Christ. As the church loves Christ. As your wife. As your wife. I pledge to love, honor, and obey. I pledge to love, honor, and obey. As the church would Christ. As the church would Christ. I will place your concerns above my own. I will place your concerns above my own. And forsaking all others. And forsaking all others. I will keep you in the center of my heart. I will keep you the center of it in my heart. I will cherish you, Mark. I will cherish you, Mark. And I will share with you. And I will share with you. The glory of our God. The glory of our God. Until he comes. Until he comes. Do you two have a token of your love for one another to exchange? <laughs> Place that on the end of her ring finger. Look her in her eyes and repeat after me. I love you, Lisa. I love you, Lisa. This ring is a token. This ring is a token of my unconditional commitment to you. Of my unconditional commitment to you. As this ring is never ending. As this ring is never ending. So shall be. So shall be our friendship and love. Our friendship and love. With this ring. With this ring. We become one for we, life. We become one for life. Go ahead and place the ring on her finger. Lisa, do you have a token of your love for Mark? Okay, place that on the end of his ring finger. There you go. Oh, Underneath there. You go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> okay, look him in his eyes and repeat after me. I love you, Mark. I love you. This ring is a token. This ring is a token. Of my unconditional commitment to you. Of my unconditional commitment to you. As this ring is never ending. As this ring is never ending. So shall be. So shall be. Our friendship and love. Our friendship and love. With this, ring, with this ring, we become one for life. We become one for life. Go ahead and place the ring on his finger. At this point in the ceremony, Mark and Lisa have decided to do perform what is called the sand ceremony. Over here to my right, to your left. And as they do, I'll explain what they're doing. As you can see, there are two vials of independent colors of sand. They're going to combine these vials together in this one center vial. Each vial represents their lives individually from up to this point. As they combine them, the grains of sand will intertwine so, so deeply that they are, for all intents and purposes, inseparable. By the authority given to me by the Lord Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Mark, you may kiss your bride. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great personal pleasure to introduce to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Mark Ewer. Yeah.
Come on, dance it down. Yeah, because you can dance it. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> 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 